Greetings all, this is Jnana Bharati. I am pleased to meet you all with this uh, hurriedly put together filler talk about data monetization or should I say creating value from data. For in the research field we like to pretend that we don't care about money. But before I get into this, let me acknowledge um, the country. We acknowledge and celebrate the first Australians on whose traditional lands we meet and we pay respects to their elders past, present and emerging. Anyway, um, I will be speaking about data monetization in the context of data quality as well as other data management key principles upon which data monetization or value creation is inextricably linked. So about data monetization and how it applies to research sector. It's about how to derive value from um, data asset. So first of all, to think about data as an asset and uh, does it have the characteristics of an asset? So that is, a, that is one um, question that um, um, often um, comes to mind. And it has been um, argued by a number of um, economists that data and information possess the characteristics of an asset. So um, as typically economists do, and uh, they have been attempting to uh, um, manage this or, or describe models to manage this. So they talk about um, factors affecting data quality, the measurable ones on the left, talk about accuracy, integrity, consistency, completeness, accessibility, precision, timeliness, etc. And the one on the right are a um, little more um, uh, intangible. They are relevance, usability, believability, clarity, objectivity, and scarcity, and so on. And um, so, um, so in, in valuing these assets, like any other assets, they talk about the quality which um, describes completeness and accuracy, et cetera, et cetera, and the relevance um, bearing on its uh, alignment uh, with the objectives and uh, processes, et cetera. And the third one about timeliness, how soon, or um, at what time it is um, uh, the information is available. So it's a timeliness. And then there are a number of costs in at various stages in terms of acquiring, processing, and applying this in different contexts. And the benefits, of course, can be gained by this, um, they argue, in the performance in the gain or in, in decision making and, and so on. Um, so in um, particularly, um, they uh, propose um, six models of um, uh, information uh, valuation or data valuation. The one, uh, the first one is the intrinsic value of information. And uh, we will look at what each one is. And then um, the next one is a business value of information and, uh, and also the performance value of information. All three are based on the characteristics of the data and the domain. But they also uh, propose three other um, uh, valuation models that are based on um, economics and finance. Uh, one is a cost value of information and the market value of information and, uh, and the economic value of information. What each one particularly talks about in this case of intrinsic value, how good and easy to use this data versus how likely others might have. So what is the intrinsic value of this? So um, of course, um, for the data to have value, it should have some level of validity. So percentage of records that seem deemed correct needs to be complete. And, um, and so it, uh, um, uh, fewer missing values and so on and on um, I mean few errors and scarcity and um, how rare the data is to find for it to have 
the monetary value, as uh, economists would put it, and then the life cycle, uh, which is how long this um, data would actually be available. So I think this is probably the most important concept for um, especially to translate into research. But um, the formula proposed is, is, um, um, is validity times completeness times one minus scarcity times, um, uh, uh, I mean, life cycle is, um, it seems to, um, at least I felt it seems to give a mixed results. Uh, I, I mean, or mixed interpretation, I would say the scarcity would in increase the value. So I did uh, slightly modify, took the liberty to modify this as accuracy, completeness, accessibility, how easy the data to access, the scarcity and the, and the life cycle uh, length or um, of uh, these actually contribute in some way, not necessarily as a product, but proportionally contribute to the intrinsic value. Then the business value on the other hand is all about um, uh, uh, how quickly something can be applied to the particular process. And they're of course talking, still talking about the business um, uh, relevance uh, uh, for business application. So it talks about relevance, validity, completeness, and timeliness. So at any given time, how soon you can get it to um, to a point and, and be able to use it. And talk about performance value of information, which is how much does the data having a unit of information intrinsically contribute to moving closer towards a uh, um, target. So it's, a, it's an incremental in, increase in uh, moving towards a target. So it's a delta. And uh, so in over a um, lifespan and um, how, uh, how much it uh, contributes. So, the, so it's a diff improvement divided by, uh, or the fractional improvement against a control group of having a data available is what is uh, what they actually propose as a, a performance value. Of course, there are other values, uh, financial measures, such as um, what um, cost value of information, which is based on what it would actually cost to replace the data, which includes um, capturing, uh, processing and um, 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 et cetera, that can be attributable to this data. But as well as if this data were to be not available, what would be the opportunity cost or the loss? And then um, market value is how much someone is willing to um, pay for it as um, in, in, in this context. And then to the finally, um, the economic value. Um, uh, so this is essentially what they're saying is it is like a performance value of information um, minus, of course, all the cost involved with this. Uh, that is a, um, to, uh, a cost of acquiring and processing and applying this data. Um, so this, I mean, that gives an overview of what the literature or uh, what um, uh, widely talked about in terms of value. And um, of course, these are pseudo equations, so you might want to um, not treat, I mean, take, you want to take it with a pinch of salt. But, um, but how do you actually apply? There are three ways you can apply this um, uh, the, or derive value from data. One, of course, the, the lowest most, the option three, you can just simply sell the data. And uh, option two is actually, you can use this data to um, enrich the products and services by wrapping information around it. So um, the, by uh, making it more uh, relevant or making it more um, personalized and so on as well as providing additional information. And then uh, the first one is how could it actually be used directly in decision-making or in improving existing processes 
etc. So three ways you could use it, but in all three cases, it's what we are trying to do. Especially this is what is relevant for research. In the in the sense is we are raising this data to be more and more organized form to answer certain questions. So uh, organized data becomes information, and uh, the linked pieces of information becomes knowledge. And the knowledge, when it is distilled knowledge, is becomes wisdom. So says um, Russell Aikoff in his um, argument about the data hierarchy, and this is. This is this particularly valuable to us because as data professionals, this is where we want to get to. How do we actually raise this data to, to this wisdom? And there are different processes that we employ. I tried to summarize um, um, uh, both um, artificial intelligence based processes as, as well as extracting simple insights such as business um, intelligence processes into one nutshell, which is of course the data, the tools and infrastructure, and the methods and the frameworks come together. And through a, um, uh, I mean, uh, through a scientific process and to be able to integrate and interpret um, um, uh, with an interpretive mindset, you actually put them together and then come up with your output. So, so if we were to describe it in the pseudo equation, the data usage depends on quality, integrity, um, of course, as we recognize fairness and the security and privacy, etc. And the process of raising the data to the wisdom process or towards it, in the case of AI, is all about minimizing the error using data, algorithms, and compute. In the case of um, um, uh, inside generation directly from the data, it's all about applying rules and compute on the data to come up with insights. This is, I see, as primary difference between the AI and the BI. And um, so in, but the perform, that is for just the model. And the performance, depends not just on this uh, first part, I mean the equation one, but also in engineering, compute, and the processes that are involved. And then um, if you want to have impact, it, performance alone is not sufficient. It has to be aligned to the actual problem, and there must be risk as well. A uh, risk that might be, that should be controlled as well. The sustained performance should it should have impact, but also should have an organization around it, including culture, governance, etc. But uh, to achieve this, we, we use a life cycle process from so starting from problem formulation to actually acquiring and processing the data, developing model, and uh, that model uh, at one stage. Um, becomes your proof of concept. After a um, few iterations, it would become your um, um, uh, a product that you actually take it to productization. So this process often uh, uh, drives the life cycle of, of the data. But we know that the data quality itself has been a serious impediment as both in the industry as well as in the academia for, uh, for actually realizing the value. And uh, billions have been estimated to contribute to that, but, but particularly the data quality, the opportunity to address data quality is, is in the early stages in, in the problem formulation, in the data processing part is where uh, most of the data quality uh, management occurs. But even, uh, but it is also, um, uh, it also spans the entire life cycle process. But uh, what is even more important is what are the downstream um, implications of this? The value 
uh, of uh, of this data and uh, in this case i want to just step away from just the monetary value it can be any value um, of the data increases as you go through more and more processing and but the ability to influence the data and um, ability to influence a value as well as the cost or the outcome decreases very rapidly over time and uh, so it is in the very early stages of the problem formulation and the initial data acquisition and pre-processing uh, most of the opportunity for working with the data is lost or it uh, is expanded and beyond that, it is actually developing the model, whatever algorithm it is, and then mainly translation and adoption. Of course, there is some dependency of these in the, in the data quality, but being able to influence would actually decrease over time. And, but it is also, it is important to know not just it decreases, but there is a serial dependency as well. That it is, it is a fragile path to the value or the impact. Um, there is a, so the whole analytic life cycle can be th thought of as a number of, um, uh, 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 a chain of linked life cycles. One, of course, uh, information and data management, modeling and um, data science and uh, deployment. So if any of this, from end to end, including the problem formulation and, and deriving value. If any of this is broken, the ability to extract um, value out of data is actually broken. And so you need to look at the whole life cycle. If um, while your ability to influence is higher in the earlier stages, the ability to um, but at the same time, the risk continue to remain the same, meaning if any of this is broken, it will continue to, it will actually destroy any value realization. And, uh, but the traditional view of research, as we see today, is, is, is primarily ending in the reports and papers and publication, primarily publications. I mean, of course, you define various measurements and constructs and gather data just to satisfy this. And, um, and they can, you may address missing data and, um, and so on. But areas such as, um, why as much as the validity of the constructs is, is explored, the validity of the, and the provenance of the data and the data quality um, is is hardly addressed. Any, in fact, anything beyond uh, being able to achieve the papers and the press, um, achieve these publications, etc., are are seriously jeopardized. And uh, so you can actually um, so you can fix a data quality issue at uh, at the end by um, uh, at um, at by adding some rules or. Uh, doing some end processing, but um, actually um, the value in um, can it, but it can also be those can be very symptomatic. And the majority of the processing that is done at, let us say, in um, pre-processing in AI or machine learning, it's it's quite symptomatic. So we use statistics to manage what is missing data or um, any, if I try to identify errors and, and so on, or we cleanse the data, impute the data. So the data quality is handled at a very symptomatic um, level. But on the other hand, um, um, the root cause resolution, going back and collecting the better data, it's um, of course the incentives are often against us, and uh, so it is seldom done. And uh, but in in reality, the fixes should occur um, throughout. 
and um, that that includes definitions, metadata, traceability, poor um, data integration. Um, so um, or um, inconsistent or erroneous lifecycle processes and management and uh, poor data migration and lack of active maintenance, which is another factor. Even if you had good data and it's one off and it is actually um, destroyed. In other words, the weight both in the industry as well as in the academia are uh, towards the production side of it than in the monitoring control and stepping back. But the data quality is one area, at least um, it uh, along with governance and risk management does look at these. And uh, so in the case of, um, uh, I mean, industry, it is all about delivery of, and uh, that in, in that, in that case of um, academia, it's all about publication. These outweigh other, um, that is uh, urgent, often outweigh the importance that having governance, having risk management processes, um, and the deep innovation in the industry can be quite lacking. And uh, especially in Australian context, and similarly, translation in research is, uh, is again, um, it's, a, it's a serious um, issue. So both are struggling with different uh, problems. And uh, the data life cycle itself is aiming uh, and um, or the data quality that is conventionally measured is looking at completeness, integrity, timeliness, validity. These are all that one considers in the case of data monetization or value creation and um, along with also data curation or improving the fairness uh, it is um, it's applied and so both care and the fair principles that are coming into place um, will play a role or could play a supportive role um, and in in the case of the value creation this is one definition, if uh, um, I mean um, this, this is uh, um, the, that actually looks at the whole life cycle process, and it looks at the end-to-end -end treatment of the um, of the of the quality. Um, so um, I I wonder if uh, uh, Leslie is here. She, um, uh, she, I mean, or um, I mean, there are authors of this paper uh, here as well. So if they're happy to comment, I'm um, most interested to listen. But this uh, Pengs et al.'s paper does actually capture the importance of da data quality and encapsulate this in this in this bigger picture. So that's something I thought um, it's quite um, quite relevant. But also, as I mentioned. The failure of the data, uh, I, mean, real, I mean, data value realization goes beyond any one stage, uh, which is, for example, if you look at, even after you build a model, a good model, um, it's only about 20% or if, uh, actually it's about 10%, 10 to 12% of the models that actually see the light of the day. They, act, they end up getting deployed. And that is what the statistic says. And um, these, these involve big figures. And it is a case even, even with the industry. And um, there are many reasons, but um, the low success rate of deployment, of course, it's tied to data quality, but it's also tied to a number of other factors, including even if you were to deploy a model, the model shifts or uh, the data quality shifts and uh, over time. So the retraining and the maintenance, etc., are quite necessary. So the value realization would involve, um, of course, um, understanding the drift in the data and uh, identifying it in time and then say retraining. So the model performance is retained. 
and uh, so this means a continued monitoring is uh, is necessary and so so in terms of beyond the algorithm one also needs to look at issues such as um, the data related issues model related issues and and the number of non technical issues if you really want to um, uh, see value realization and uh, if you also want to see if the model getting used there need to be trust in the model and the data so the model must be able to should not be black box it should be able to explain its finding and um, uh, so um similarly um the data provenance scope quality etc comes into picture but also number of non um quantitative factors um um uh, non technological socio technical factors also comes into being so that is why it is so ai ml code for example in a, in a machine learning situation is only one small piece of this and in reality you have number of other uh, boxes to worry about even just from the technological perspective so putting it all together so we are looking at um, there are systems level challenges to the value creation starting from the life cycle stages of linked life cycles and uh, often times lack of stakeholder participation and uh, serial dependencies in the path and uh, number of interactions dependencies and points of failures in this so the path to value creation or impact is 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 a fragile path and uh, but at the same time if you really look at um majority of the um Uh, if you ask the practitioners which issues are important um what i had found is it's kind of diverging usually the younger uh, professionals hdr students or even early career researchers focus quite a bit on the technical aspects such as say um the model development the green for the green bees and um, if you ask more senior professionals um and some of them will concede to the that uh, one says get familiar with it they will concede to data preprocessing stages but um but it takes much more years of training and actual practice and failures to understand how much more value also lies in other areas including the problem formulation as well as uh, uh, productionizing as well so um so this um so th- so there are number of issues such as um, um domain inefficiencies peculiarities the missed opportunities and so on that are already plaguing um research sector as well as um Uh, number of um, uh, um i mean um, as well as uh, um the industry sector is not immune to that as well there have been legal battles and uh, and so on but at the same time um and also it results in the poor decision making propagation of biases and um, organizational politics and broken window syndrome it often happens in research labs okay it's been this way and uh, let's keep going and same in the industry and could often result in mistrust and distrust of data so uh, i was going to give you some case studies but in the interest of time i'm just cutting it short and uh, but it is important to uh, look at solving the right problem and um, it is important to have a hyper participation of the stakeholders and uh, not just um both the technical stakeholders um across a value chain but also um uh, the customers and other stakeholders as well and to understand the path to value is long and fragile and um also allocate appropriate resources 
without cannibalizing and understand the biases, risk and ethical issues both in the data as well as the processing pipeline, including um, machine learning or other modeling processes. And tech compatibility is also quite, um, quite important. So one needs to take a more systems view and the frameworks, governance and manage management are important. Processes and are important. Metadata and meaning are quite important. And human factors need to be addressed. So, so do risk ethics and fair and care ideas. So I was thinking what happens in a slightly less data intensive area in, in the case of translation. So um, I was looking at some of the um, um, uh, systematic reviews in this area. And uh, surprisingly, um, uh, the number of issues that have been highlighted in the case of um, translation uh, research evidence is, um, is quite, quite interesting, but also worth learning about, partly because there are very few um, studies in the data profession itself about the translation and, and so on. So they talk about time constraints, lack of workforce, etc. So, and uh, they talk about identifying the right stakeholders, budgeting the right uh, level of activities, motivation of professionals, and so on. And um, so things that are barriers versus that are facilitating have been uh, nicely laid out. And similarly, what is micro level versus MISO or systems level have also been uh, highlighted. So I thought it is, um, worth looking at uh, some of the other domains and uh, see how they have actually done some of these translation and, and value creation. And um, there are a number of theories on models and um, theories, models and frameworks in uh, certain sectors, particularly in um, uh, healthcare or clinical translations that is worth learning about. So with that, I would uh, actually stop here.